cosmology of the last 80 years has been solidly grounded on two ideas, Lemaitre's Big Bang and Einstein's Relativity. We saw in episode 41 that the whole story depends on the redshifts of what are believed to be far distant galaxies. These redshifts were first noted by Vesto Slipher. They were catalogued in detail by Edwin Hubble. Now, Lemaitre was absolutely certain the redshifts were caused by the Doppler effect, which means the light source must be moving away from the Earth and moving away very quickly. Hubble doubted this, but couldn't think of an alternative explanation. The vast majority of scientists agreed with Lemaitre, and the expanding universe became one of the absolute certainties of cosmology. But in 1976, William Tift published his observations which showed that the redshifts are quantized, meaning that galaxies do not speed up continuously, but in steps of a definite size. His work was soon confirmed by other astronomers. So now the redshifts are not a continuous pattern around the Earth, but discrete shells around the Earth. That's a big problem for the Big Bang. Under the original idea that the redshifts are due to the galaxies moving away from us, they would have to move at one speed for a long time, then suddenly jump to another very much higher speed. According to a later mind-boggling claim by the relativity boffins, space itself is expanding, whatever that might mean. And space itself must suddenly begin expanding at that new, much faster speed. But however nonsensical these ideas might be, the scientific establishment has not wavered in its support for the expanding universe. Being the best theory in the field, it cannot be rejected until another materialistic alternative has been found. As new observations continue to show the Big Bang could not be true, we saw that John Maddox produced an editorial for the most prestigious scientific journal in the world, Nature, in which he wrote, In all respects, save that of convenience, this view of the origin of the universe is thoroughly unsatisfactory. Not a murmur from the establishment. A decade later, in another editorial in Nature, dealing with the latest observations from the Hubble telescope, he wrote, The result, the third of its kind in under a year, makes a nonsense of the Big Bang view of how the universe began. But nonsense or not, while deemed to be the best in the field, it stands firm as a rock. Halton Arp used to be rated in the top 20 of the world's astronomers. But his research started showing that many, if not all, of the redshifts could not be due to the Doppler effect. They show that the celestial bodies cannot be moving in the way the Big Bang requires. He became a major embarrassment. The journal stopped publishing his papers. He was banned from using his university's telescope. His rating was slashed and he was hounded and berated until he took early retirement. But the scientific establishment couldn't stop him publishing a book, Seeing Red, in which he detailed his observations, the obvious conclusions, and comments on the establishment's dirty tricks. So the first pillar of current cosmology, the Big Bang, is effectively known to be nonsense, as Maddox pointed out decades ago. The scientific establishment's support for it is pure dishonesty. And what about the other pillar, Einstein's general theory of relativity? As we saw in the last episode, this theory does not apply to the universe we live in. It applies to a mathematical universe where there is a dimension of imaginary time multiplied by the speed of light. Now, most people, when they hear that for the first time, think it's a joke. But it's not. 
It's a dead serious part of the theory. Stephen Hawking, one of the most prominent proponents of relativity and cosmology in the world, wrote a book, The Large-Scale Structure of Space-Time, with George Ellis, a highly rated South African astronomer. The book dished up the popular mythomatical story about a universe where the centre is everywhere and its edge is nowhere. Now, of course, a body with its centre everywhere and its edge nowhere is utter nonsense in the real world. But standard stuff in a world where imaginary time multiplied by the speed of light is some sort of a reality. But just about any other sort of universe is also possible. Ellis pointed out that he could just as well produce a geocentric universe, a universe with the Earth stationary at the centre. And he claimed it could not be disproved by observations. The only difference was, he said, an admixture of ideology. Now, using mathematics just as valid as Hawkins and Ellis used, one could produce other types of universe. Each would simply need a different admixture of ideology. One could produce a universe popularly known as the hollow Earth. We are on the inside surface of a hollow sphere containing the sun and space. Alternatively, one can produce a very popular universe, usually known as the flat earth. As with the hollow earth, it needs some changes and different admixtures of ideology. Changes to the usually accepted behaviour of light and gravity since neither Einstein's nor Newton's theories work well at all. And it needs some assumptions about the form and properties of the material underneath the Earth. But the mathematics is as valid as that used by the respected cosmologists in their Big Bang world. So, hollow Earth proponents and flat Earth proponents have as valid claims to their universes as the Big Bangers have to theirs. One could come up with lots of other universes too. So, how do we find out what kind of universe we actually live in? Well, before we can make sense of that question from a scientific perspective, we need to look at the raw data that cosmology has to work with. Observations coming from astronomical telescopes, for example. We can look at that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.